Now, I was told recently that uh, President Obama saying the private sector is doing just fine. It was horrible, and I can't believe he would say that. But interestingly enough, the CEO of Goldman Sachs went on Morning Joe this morning and said something very similar. Let's watch. I think we're in a tough position for the next three, four, or five months. And listen, we've been in a lot tougher position. Right. And the economy is not horrible. It's just not growing the way it should. And there's just a lot of uncertainty. Now, he's saying basically, look, in the end, we might be going through a rough spot, but we're in pretty good shape. Now, if I was Lloyd Blankfein, I'd think the same thing, because he got billions of dollars of free money from the U.S. government. In fact, the bankers are doing terrific. Why? The bank rescue gave them $700 billion through TARP. And then what's not talked about enough, $7.7 .7 trillion from the Fed. <clears throat> and all the Fed money was interest-free, so they just got to keep uh, whatever interest they charge on top. It's basically free money. Well, you can't lose that way. Now, how about homeowners? Did we get the same kind of benefit? No, of course not. $50 billion was pledged to homeowners for relief, which is obviously a comically low percentage of what was given to the banks. But even that promise wasn't kept. Only $3.7 billion was were spent. Now, we were told all this because we had to do it this way. You have to help the banks, otherwise the rest of the economy is going to be in trouble. But it turns out we helped the banks to the tune of trillions of dollars, and what happened? Do you know that between 2001 and 2010, the median net worth in the, uh, net worth in the country dropped 27%. And when you break it down, as you see on that graph there, uh, actually, the lowest 20%, their income went up a little bit. That's because of government aid programs, because of how deep the recession was. But their wealth plummeted. And then if you look at the very right, you'll see that the income of the top 20%, top 10%, I should say, went down a tiny bit, but their wealth actually skyrocketed up. And that's because they don't pay very much taxes. But most importantly, it's the vast middle. Income going down and wealth going down even more. So this strategy of giving everything to the banks and nothing to the homeowners didn't work for us here in the United States. We lost our median net worth, and it really hurt our middle class. Now, it turns out they were lying to us, that there is a different answer. Now, if you remember from the movie Inside Job, they covered Iceland. And in Iceland, in the beginning, they went in totally the wrong direction with deregulation, and they explained that in the movie. The government privatized Iceland's three largest banks. The result? was one of the purest experiments in financial deregulation ever conducted. Finance took over um, and uh, more or less wrecked the place. In a five-year period, these three tiny banks, which had never operated outside of Iceland, borrowed $120 billion dollars ten times the size of Iceland's economy. So they privatized and deregulated just like we did, and they had a collapse just like we did. In fact, it was an enormous collapse. The uh, banks defaulted on $85 billion worth of money, and that was 200, they had a debt to income ratio in Iceland of 240%, which is a stunning number. So their collapse might have been even larger than ours. But they went in a different direction after us. They didn't give everything to the banks. In fact, what they did was they took legal action against all the people who caused the mess. First of all, uh, there was uh, their prime minister was indicted. Can you imagine if we did that to our leaders? It would be awesome. Over 200 criminal charges were filed against the bankers. And in fact, the former chief executives of the three biggest banks all arrested, one of them in solitary confinement. They did to the bankers what we do to Bradley Manning for telling us what our government's actually doing. Can you imagine? Well, ah, come on, that's not going to work, is it? Now, but there was a second part to it. The second part was, not only are we going to go after the guys who caused the mess, but we're actually going to try to help the citizens. Wow, that's crazy. So what did they do there? Well, they did a banking agreement where they uh, forgave debt exceeding 110% of your home's value. So if you were massively underwater, they reduced your payments. They reduced your principal because you couldn't really pay it, right? So that helps homeowners. Well, uh, that cost the banks a total of $1.6 billion. That makes sense. They're the ones who were at fault. Now, that's the equivalent of 13% of GDP in Iceland, which is a huge, huge number. And it was relief given to 25% of the population. A full quarter of the population got uh, home uh, debt relief. Now, we were told here in the United States, both by Republicans and Democrats like Tim Geithner, well, that can't work. That'll destroy our economy. So what happened in Iceland? 
when they nationalized the banks and actually helped homeowners? Well, in the first year, it was tough. In 2009, uh, their economy went down 6.7%. And then, all of a sudden, a rebound. In 2010, it goes up 2.9%. In 2011, 2.4%. Now they're doing better than the European Union and the combination of countries in the OECD. So, after they did the right things, and they actually helped their own citizens and put the bankers in jail, they rebounded tremendously and are now doing better than the great majority of countries in the world, including the United States. Because they actually help their middle class, which is always the engine of growth in these countries. In fact, even the rating agencies, Fitch Ratings, had to say this at the end. Iceland's unorthodox crisis policy response has succeeded. I love that going after the bankers who caused the mess is unorthodox. Helping your own citizens is unorthodox. But guess what? It works. And maybe we should try it here in the U.S.